Okay, well, uh, I guess it's going to be a bit of a squeeze, but it, oh, it should, should be work. fine. You need more space for back uh, In Norway, we say the third in the middle because it rhymes. So it's Dritni Mitten. Ah, you're great. <laughs> third in the middle. Okay. Dritni Mitten. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, let's see the temperature. Wow, today is like a hell. So, yeah, people in Dubai say that there's only two seasons in Dubai. It's summer and hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today's the hell part. Uh, Larry, I saw one of your Skype interviews and you had a flag of Iran in the background. I, I had a what? You had the flag, the national oh, yes. flag of Iran. Oh, <laughs> so... These two of the co-founders are, are, um, are, are Persian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a... Um, so Sam Kazmian, the, the, the president, right? We have a thing in the office that we have a flag for every nationality that works at our company. Okay. So we have people... Uh, I'm from Sweden. Such is from Norway. Um, you know, one of our co-founders, Sam, is from Iran. We have uh, Romy, who's from Dubai. Um, we have... Dave, who's uh, Jewish, so we have like an Israeli flag. Um, we have, what else do we have, Suja? We have uh, Angel, who's uh, Venezuelan. Um, Christian, who's Mexican. We probably have the Kedar most diverse Indian. team in the, yeah, Kadar, who's uh, Indian. Yeah. So how many people are in the office in Infopedia? Uh, about 15, full time, and then, it kind of varies, but, 10, 11, 12 people in the office in Los Angeles. All right. Yeah. You think in terms of basing it in LA, it's it's a good decision strategically, like speaking from a perspective of having a cluster with other organizations and partners and... Yeah, I mean, it's um, like the second best place in the United States to have a tech company. It's called Silicon Beach. There's a lot of, like the scene is really growing there. You have a lot of companies that decide to actually stay in Los Angeles instead of moving up to San Francisco now. Um, you, you know, you have Snapchat, uh, Tinder, um, like Riot Games, um, Electronic Arts, a bunch of like te huge tech companies that are now based in LA. And so you have a really great growing tech scene there as well. So Everpedia, we've been looking at moving to San Francisco, but every time we do, we kind of decide kind of like it in a way so it's better to just stay yeah you know the blockchain approach is really smart actually when you think about uh, hosting everything the whole peer-to-peer -peer. yep mm. it's operating on the same principles as uh, Bitcoin and uh, BitTorrent mm. and uh, it kind of serves as a insurance for everyone creating the content that no matter what happens to like us as an organization or company or whatever, or, like our servers or something, like the content and the articles that they write and spend you know hours and hours on, will always live on peer to peer. No matter what happens to like our ser servers or whatever, mm -hmm. which is really cool. So if I go to China, can I access uh, Wikipedia? Yeah. So the the way we're hosting it, I don't know if Larry mentioned, but we're hosting it on uh, something called IPFS. Um, which means that, like I was saying, it's hosted completely peer-to-peer, -peer, like the, the underlying network. Um, so any website, app, or application, or whatever, you like, can just plug into the network. Um, which means that, you know, obviously the Chinese government can block or censor one IP or like one website. Um, but they can't block, you know, 20,000 different computers that are, you know, collectively hosting this information. They can try, you know, to block a few and then it keeps changing and stuff, but it's basically impossible for them to censor it. Which is obviously a huge deal, because there's a lot of countries censoring Wikipedia and other sites on the there's internet. There's something similar happening with uh, sports betting companies, where in particular countries, you know, they were trying to block the main domain and then every month they were coming up with a new domain, you know, yep. and that... Because depending on the country's legislation, it might take maybe a month to get approval to, to ban the domain. And then yeah. next month, you email your database and you say, okay, this is our new domain now. And 
Yep. It's just keep changing every month. It's like uh, the Pirate Bay. It keeps yeah. changing from <laughs> .org to .cc. Like, yeah. Mm. So it's uh, basically the same principle. You can access it from like any access point, but the information is always there, no matter how much you try to censor it. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of revolutionary, because um, like Turkey, for example, completely blocks access to Wikipedia. Really? 